In this video, I want to talk about layers. Now, layers in Visio are a mechanism for simplifying or clarifying complex drawings. And this is primarily done by highlighting the color of particular shapes or changing the visibility of particular shapes or locking shapes down based on their layer so that they don't get moved or deleted. Now, I said it's helpful for complex drawings, but it's easier to understand layers if we start with a simple case. So let's do that right now. So we've got a fairly simple drawing here that just has some rectangles, squares, ellipses, and circles on it. And I want to assign these to some very simple layers. So how do we assign shapes to layers? Well, we just select them. We go up to the editing group in the home tab and we say assign to layer. Now the page has no layers in it, so we'll just start with square, th square things and we'll hit OK. Now these shapes all belong to a layer called square things. Similarly, we'll do the same thing with the curvy things and we'll say a assign to a layer. Let's call it round things. And you'll notice that square things is available, so I could actually uh, assign these things to multiple layers. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. So now we've got a bunch of shapes that have been assigned to layers. Big deal. What do we do with it? Well, we go to the other layer item in the menu, and it's called Layer Properties, and that brings up the Layer, layer Properties dialog. And you can see there's some st status information about each layer. The number of shapes on each layer. Now be careful if you have group shapes, this counts the subshapes within the subshapes within the subshapes of the grouped shape. So this number is not always very useful. It's mostly useful when it says zero if you want to get rid of unused layers. You can see that both layers are visible, both are going to print. None of them are active or locked. They're snapping and gluing in color settings too, but none of them have any special colors. So uh, assign. So the first thing you might want to do is just to turn off the visibility of them and you don't have to leave this dialog, you can just hit the apply button to see what happens. So let's turn off of the round things layer and you can see those disappear just like that. Similarly we could color the square things layer and make it red and we'll hit apply and you'll notice that I made round things visible again too. So round things come back and the square things have kind of a red tinge. Now this is really nice because you haven't had to go in and affect the formatting of the shapes. You've been able to highlight something based on some semantic information you've given to the shapes, but you don't have to change the formatting, then go back and unchange it at a, a later date. This is an artificial overlay, so to speak, on top of the square things layer. So let's just turn that off and return everything to its natural state. And we'll hit OK. So it's worth noting at this point that layers are defined for each page and layers will travel with a shape that has them assigned. So if I copy this shape over to a new page, that new page won't have any of the layers that we've defined here until I paste the shape on the page, then the new page will get the square layers page. What else can we do with the layers? Well, there's a select special option, which is really cool, where we can select shapes by type and one of the options there is down here is that you can select shapes by layer. So let's say we had a really uh, a large number of shapes on the page all dispersed amongst each other and we wanted to get rid of the round things or just at least select them and maybe move them a little bit. So we could click on round things, hit OK, and there they are all picked out from the, the mess of shapes that could have been on the page. So that's a very useful, very useful feature. Another thing I want to do before we go any further is I want to customize the, the quick access toolbar because you notice every time we have to drop down and get at these little uh, items and uh, it's kind of annoying to have to drop down all the time. So if you're working heavily with layers, you just right click on an item and say add to the quick access toolbar and we'll do that with the layer properties item as well. Add it up here and you'll see I, I've also added another one that I got by customizing the ribbon and I've already done it, but you go customize the ribbon and you can see that uh, we want to do the quick access toolbar. It's, it's uh, called layer. So you'll the way that you find it is you go to the choose command from all commands and just look for the one called layer down in the L section and assign it here. And that gives you a nice little drop down that shows you what layer a shape is assigned to. You can see this one's assigned to round things and this one's assigned to square things. 
And furthermore, if you make a new shape, say this one, you can see it, it's assigned to no layer up here. Well, I can quickly just assign it to round things when I put it on the page. So let's move on to a, a slight, slightly more complex scenario. We'll go to the next page here where we've got a, a floor plan of a house. And if I zoom in, you can see this is, this is quite busy. There's all sorts of things, walls, windows, doors, light switches, electrical outlets, uh, light fixtures, labels, uh, windows, and everything on there. So it's, it's too busy for every co consumer of this drawing. So let's, uh, what can we do with layers? Well, let's first thing we'll do is we'll go to our layers layer properties dialog up here and you can see whoa there's all sorts of layers in here and the first thing that makes sense is to lock down things that never move we've drawn the floor plan the only thing we're going to be adding to this are notations and maybe furniture so let's start by locking let's see locking the doors let's see there's walls we should lock those down too did you see how I was able to clear and I can either lock everything and unlock it by clicking on the column header. But we'll just start with walls, windows, doors, cabinetry, appliances, and plumbing fixtures. These are things that don't need to move. So I'll hit uh, OK. And now if I come down into the drawing, you can see I can't actually select any of these big things. I can still select uh, the, the light fixtures and labels and electrical outlets and things like that, furniture, but I can't select any of these non-movable things like that. Great. So now let's say the we wanted to give this drawing f to the real estate agent. We're going to sell the house. Who knows what we're going to do. Let's, let's turn off some visibility of things. So all these electrical switches and uh, lighting elements and things like that they don't need to see those. Let's see, maybe even the annotations they're not interested in. So we hit apply and you can see all those little tick marks have disappeared. I think we missed something. One more. There they are. Now it's all clean. All those little things that real estate agents don't care about are gone. Similarly, we might go the other way where the electrical guy is coming in and he doesn't care about room names. He doesn't care about uh, furniture. He might not even care about cabinetry and appliances and annotations. He, he might want to know the annotations. So we'll do that. And now you can see this is kind of a more of a, a technical view of the drawing with just the little symbols. Now furthermore, you might want to highlight certain parts of this drawing uh, even while, I mean, you've, you've already limited what's shown on the drawing, but you might want to highlight per certain parts. So maybe the lighting is the problem. So we can go to the lighting row and click on the color tab and choose a color from this drop down and hit apply and now not only are all the electrical elements visible in this drawing but the, the anything that has to do with lighting is highlighted in red based on its layer pretty cool now the last scenario I might want to do is maybe we, we just want to do some sketching with our floor plan as a base so what we can actually do is set to print certain layers so well let's go up here and let's do this so we've got a print layer here and we can click print and turn everything off and say only the walls windows and doors should print now when I hit OK nothing changes in the drawing and that's just kind of an interesting thing because print is different than visibility and you have to keep that in mind but when we go over to file print you can see just the walls windows and doors are there and this might be good we could print out 10 of these and just you know sit out in the back porch and sketch some ideas on there without being distracted by what already is in the house these are immov immovable fixtures for the most part unless we want to add a new door or something but uh, now we can freely sketch on this and use it as a, a template for our ideas so that's pretty cool and it's also something you want to keep in mind because uh, you might hide things on certain layers or you might only have them, they, they might be hidden in the drawing but visible in the print and you send this out to a client or a colleague and you have some weird little notes that you made and turned off two weeks ago and you forgot about them. This can cause embarrassment occasionally as I've heard some horror stories so uh, make sure you review what your hidden layers and your print printing layers before you send drawings out. Before I finish I thought I would go on and talk about uh, some of the gotchas you'll run into, uh, we'll call it uh, 
situations with real world layers. So these are actually the shapes as they're dropped from Visio. So just two, two sofas and a wall shape. Now what happens when we go to the layer properties? We see there's four layers. Well, that's kind of weird because there's really only two types of shapes here. How did we end up with four layers? Well, let's look at each shape. So if I select the walls and we go to the layer assigned to layer dialog, you can see it's, it belongs to two layers, building envelope and wall. Okay, if I click on a sofa, you can see again it says multiple layers in the drop down. And when we go to assign to layer, you can see it's it belongs to movable furnishings and furniture. Okay, so this is this is the neat thing about layers is if you're working with them and you're thinking, I want to be able to classify my shapes from general to specific. So you, we've got movable things, furniture, sofa two-seater sofa. You could have all sorts of layers assigned to each one of them. That's great if you're using, say, select by type, because you can say, I really only want the, you know, you, you can get the most specific class, or you can get the most general class for any kind of a shape. But if you're working with the, the visibility and the hiding and the coloring, it's not so simple. So say we want to make the walls disappear. We click on walls and make the uh, uncheck visible, and we hit apply, and nothing happens in the diagram. And that's because the walls belong to a double, have two layers. So we have to get wall and building envelope unchecked before the walls disappear. That's a little bit hard to do, especially if you're heavily using layers to heavily classify your shapes. And this is, this is the same situation with coloring. So we'll bring the walls back. If I want to make it red, I have to make every layer that the wall shape belongs to red to get it to work. That's really, really cumbersome. So that's a gotcha you're going to have to be aware of. And it, it works the reverse, though, for locking and printing. So if we want to lock something, we, and so we know the sofa belongs to furniture and movable furnishings. If we click on just one of those layers and lock it, then that that works. So there's kind of a, it depends on what you're doing as to whether, I think I think the, the logic was there's some sort of positive thing. If anything applies, so we're not really hiding layers, we're, we're making them visible. So to make them invisible, you have to uncheck everything that applies to a shape. But to lock them so that there's no positive, there's no positive condition that applies to the shape. So if we lock any of the layers that the shape belongs to, then the shape will be locked. So it's also the same with print, I believe. You can, if you have just one layer printable, say furniture, then let's go to print, then sure enough, that applies. You can see the sofas are gonna apply. So for print and lock, you just have to get one of the layers that the shape belongs to. But to make them invisible or colored, you have to get all of the sh layers the shape belongs to. That's a little bit tricky. So think about how you're going to use the layers. And if you're going to work heavily with Select Special, then you can go crazy with your layering and adding shapes to multiple layers, You know, classifying your shapes from general to specific. But if you're going to use the coloring and the visibility stuff heavily, try to limit the number of layers that you apply shapes to. And most of the stuff that comes with space planning and office planning and home planning and Visio, most of the shapes are applied to several layers. So you're going to have to learn what they are to turn things on and off. But if you just want to lock things down, it's much more simple. Uh, the last little gotcha is this layer properties dialog. It's really, it's really nice, but it's modal. That means you always have to bring it up and close it. Now you can do some of the visibility and coloring stuff and use the apply dialog, but you can never actually get in and work with the shapes with it. And a lot of people wish that this could be docked at the side of the window and always be there and easily available, but it just isn't sadly. And uh, if you're coming from other CAD or illustration programs, you might be used to thinking of layers as having some sort of Z order, some sort of front to backness of them. That's not true with Visio. Uh, I used to always say visual layers are class, not glass. So they're not in invisible sheets of vellum that you can move up and down uh, like you can with Adobe Illustrator or lots of bitmap uh, image photo editing software. They, there's, no, there's no correlation between 
the front or backness of a shape and which layer it's on. It, it, that's completely independent. So don't go looking for how to move the wall layer in front of the furniture layer because it, that doesn't exist. But again, you can use Select Special to select a bunch of shapes, then bring them to front or send them to back. So let's wrap this up. This was a long unit, so let's recap what we talked about. So you can use a single drawing for multiple purposes when you classify your shapes using layers. We saw instances where we gave the same drawing to the real estate agent, and we also used one for just planning out our thoughts sitting out on the back porch, or also giving the electrical plan to the electrical repairman. Really cool. The layers really allow you to simplify the complexity of the drawing, and the primary ways you do this are in coloring layers or hiding layers of shapes or locking down parts of the drawing so that you don't accidentally move stuff like that. Layers in Visio are classifications of shapes. They're not glass layers that can be moved up and down, so there's no correspondence between uh, a layer and the Z order or the front to backness of the shapes on that layer. The shapes can be all over the place in terms of front to backness. That's not important. If you are going to use the select special to select shapes by layers, then you can use lots of layer names and give shapes lots of layer membership. Uh, we had the example of uh, talking about a sofa could be assigned to many, many layers, the movable furnishings layer, the furniture layer, the sofa layer, and the two-seater sofa layer. And that would allow you to do some really fancy things if you're doing selecting by layers. However, if you primarily want to use layers to do hiding or coloring, then this will make things difficult because you'll have to check off all of those layers in order just to hide the two-seater sofa. So if you're doing hiding and coloring, you want to keep the number of layers that each shape belongs to, to maybe two or one uh, for absolute simplicity. Uh, last thing we want to talk about are we can customize the quick access toolbar to put our layer buttons directly up there so we don't have to always drop down from the home tab uh, to get at the functionality we need. We added that extra layer drop down that's not even in the default Visio user interface. That was really cool. And there were several layer gotchas, but the most important one is to rem remember is that you might hide some things or set them to print only and forget about them later and send data out to clients that you don't want them to see. So things to keep in mind. So that's layers. Uh, that was a good long video. Thanks for your patience and on to the next one.